I am Vinny Tonerich, folks. Your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. <laughs> you see how I did that, Anna? I did. You may be soft and succulent at the beginning of this process, but hang in there. Before long, you will be lean and mean, guaranteed, just like the woman who's coming back. I said back again. Black. She's coming <laughs> back. <laughs> show, we're going to be hearing all about it. I'm talking about the beautiful Miss Anna Vocino. Yeah. Yeah, Anna, we're going to do the wild thing. Are we? Yeah, just like Mr. Tone Loke just said. I, I just want everyone to know that I yeah. had that kiss single. You, you did have that kiss single? I had the kiss single of Tone Loke's wild thing. Yeah. That was and, that, like, I, and I turned out okay. Maybe 87, 89. Yeah. Around there. I was going to say it would be either end of middle school, beginning of high school for me. All right, yeah. This is me tearing it up in New Orleans. I remember those days. You want to hear a little bit more, Anna? Yeah, I do. It's a catchy yeah. song. If you are new to this show, buckle in. <laughs> buckle in because we're going for it today. Anna, this might be our last show. <laughs> are we done? Oh, my God. I've been waiting for you to say these words. For 12 years now. We might get kicked off the Internet by the end of this show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling randy tonight. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't even know what that means. I just hear Serena. Yeah, Randy means horny, I believe. Oh, maybe I am. <laughs> oh, hang in there, lady. You have a hard on for big sugar. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah I got a real hard on for big sugar. Yeah. Um, I, and I, all right, so today was one of those days, right? So Sure. Like I had a lot of fucking you know day. How it is. You and I, every day is one of those days for us. We, yeah. we work our asses off and um, doing everything I can to, you know, we're trying to catch up with the vitamin company, you know, just all the things. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, but it was. Do you also want to give an update while you're here? No, no, no. no I don't, I don't want to confuse because I don't want to confuse. It's, we're catching up. It's, okay. it's getting there, but it's daily, Great. it's daily hell. But Understood. anyway, Understood. it was also leg day today. Leg oh, day. never leg skip day leg day. day. Yeah, well, you know what? I had to skip it yesterday. I had to push it by <gasps> a day because I was just super busy. Yeah. But you know what? I, I got it done today. Good for today you. It was also a big aerobic day. So leg day. And, you know, I did 90 minutes of aerobics. Folks, do not try that at home. And then um, I had some stuff to do with Serena, some manual labor stuff to do around the Good house. Good for you. Good for you. And, uh, you know, after, you know, you know, brain work and leg day and aerobics and then some manual labor, moving stuff around, lifting stuff, doing other stuff. I said, you know what? Before this podcast, I have to take a shower. I have to get myself together. So I jumped in the shower, took a nice hot shower. Good. Got my old bones moving. And I did the thing. I said, you know what? I got an extra 10 minutes here. Mm-hmm. Just gonna, that bed is looking inviting. I'm just going to lay there and just let my my back do a and little, a little a, a meditation, which is really a nap. I don't nap, Anna. But a ten I minute gotta, nap. There must have been a button on my ass because as soon as I hit that bed, I was snoring. <laughs> and somehow my my subconscious yeah. is still working, and I woke up five minutes later. Now I have that tired thing going on. By the way, folks, we, we're, we're recording this in the evening. So it's evening time here. So you took an evening I mean, nap is what you're saying. Yeah, like when most people would be going to bed. Anyway, so I get up and I was like, Jesus Christ. But you see, I had the wherewithal before I went up to take my shower to turn on my espresso machine and let that boiler heat up. So um, I had myself a double. And while I was having that double, you can st still see it on my lips. While I was having that double, I had another double. I, mm. I made another one. That's the one I was just You made a quad. Oh, yeah. I had a quad. I had a quad espresso. Yeah. And you know, it bumped. Uh, you know, it, I might as well have had cocaine in here. I, I'm pretty sure that Bogota would have liked that. <laughs> can't even get close to what you just. I got to say, my late brother-in-law, George, who you know, he's the one who taught me about the quad, the quad shot, and he taught me about the red eye. I didn't know about the red eye where, where you, you take your coffee. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, that is next level. And he's I respect a, it. He was a junkie. He was a junkie. He's like me. He's we all coffee. are for yeah. caffeine. Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, I don't. I don't like it when people are like, I don't. I don't. I don't drink caffeine. It. I, mm-hmm. Here's why I don't like it, because I don't ever want to quit it. So, if you're trying to convince me that it's more virtuous to not have caffeine, it won't work. Yeah. Because I, I'm not gonna. It's just like when people try to shame me when I say I like hot dogs. It's not that I eat them all the time. I do not. But you're never right. gonna shame me. I love hot dogs. I'm just. I'm weird yeah. that way. Anna likes a big tube of meat in her mouth. That's right. It's the way she rolls. That's right. And, and look, Anna. Look, I'm a guy. As you know, I'm a sugarholic. I abstain from sugar. I stay away right. from it. I, I live in dietary ketosis. I do all the things. Right. Coffee is my. I, I'm not. Get, and by the way. Is shown to be healthy. Even the American Heart Association says coffee is healthy. Even no. that Fakakta organization has For, their head out of their ass about caffeine. When you're taking 22 grams of coffee and pushing nine bars of pressure through it to get right at two ounces of product, you got yourself a little something that's strong. And when you do two of those, Anna can tell you, I within a few minutes of waking up from that nap, I'm ready to fucking fly to the moon here. I mean, it's amazing Great. how good this, this stuff is, works. This is when I wish we both had um, standing desks. It might do us some good to consider. Oh, I would need a standing desk with a uh, treadmill behind it. <laughs> with, a, with an elliptical on a treadmill at an incline doing steps. By the way, my new neighbors, uh, let's call her Amy because, uh, well, that's her name. And um, she and her husband, I ran into them outside a little while ago. And, you know, hey, are you guys, you know, we, we've gone over to their house, you know, done the, the, the wine and cheese thing. Nice. You know, that kind of thing to meet and the whole thing. And super nice people. And um, as it turns out, I, I introduced you to Amy's brother, David. Right. Right. Um, and anyway, I, I ran into Amy, you know, while I was uh, walking Bonzo and they were walking there. And she was like, hey, I read your book. And oh, I my went, gosh. Oh, gee, thanks. And she goes, and when I got to the part where you said no grains, I yelled from, uh, she goes, I was upstairs. I yelled downstairs to Huntley and said, he says no grains. I don't know if he could do this. <laughs> that, that, is, that does seem to be a sticking point with some people. But she also told me, she goes, you know, I just turned 50. And, she's my uh, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, uh, she goes, we just turned 50. And for my birthday, what I decided was, because she works from home, she's full-time job, works from home. She's on a telephone all day. And she goes, I noticed that I got this Apple thing. I don't walk. I don't move anymore. Right. And we got into a whole conversation about walking. And she goes, she, you know, she goes, yeah, I'm but you know. Walking. And she goes, some days I get less than a thousand steps. I said, no. maybe not good. I said, you know, they say walk, you Can know. Can she take her calls while she's walking? That's what I That's what we started talking about. And she was like, well, some of them are Zoom meetings. And her husband, who happened to be taking a little walk with her, he goes, you know, honey, we could put an app where you, you can Zoom and walk. Yeah. So, you know, folks, there's ways Absolutely. to walk around this stuff. And I said, Amy, I don't know if you ever noticed, but I walk around the neighborhood all the time. You, you might see my hands waving because I'm Italian. That <laughs> means I'm, I'm doing meetings while I walk. I do the consults and what have you. And uh, I said, you know, on most days, I'll get 15, 18,000 steps in. Right. Because you're kidding. She, you know, uh, I, and I looked at my watch and I went, yeah, already today, 14,000 steps. She was amazed at that. She goes, you know, it got to where some days I would get to the end of the day and not have 800 steps all day long. And like they say, sitting <laughs> is sitting is the new smoke. That is that just seems crazy to me because I would think even just walking around your house pacing, you would you get would, yeah, but she gets up, she, you know, her kids are older, you know, she doesn't have to walk them down breakfast and all that, and she just starts working. You know, she's got a stressful job and she she's on the phone, meetings, working, phone calls, what have you. Yeah. And um, I know what she does. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say what it is, but, you know, it, it's Go a very- Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and tell job. everybody. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> and- um, It's not relevant. Yeah, it's not relevant, but she she's, it's a stressful job. And she, she goes, you know what? I even have a standing desk. She goes, but I never lift it up. She goes, I need, I said, Amy, that's the first part. Start lifting that desk up. Stand oh, there. Oh, Yeah. 
stand sitting as the new cigarettes. I'm telling I you. I have this no gorgeous, good. gorgeous custom made desk. And, and I wish that I had gotten the guy to build like a standing thing. I think you can get one. I'm going to look into it. I'm sure they're on Amazon. Cause I, yeah. 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 To put and just stand up, just stand up. Yeah. Even just standing is better. Um, yeah. Uh, gosh, do you want to start with that sugar document that you sent me first and then we'll go and in, go into the food show? Yeah, let's get that out of the way and then we'll do a quick Villacaprelli, 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 very Capri drink. Uh, I mean, don't drink it. Yeah, oh drink God. it. And yeah, we'll get to that. Definitely drink it. We'll let's do that. Let's <sighs> talk about what I sent you and then we'll go from there. Okay. You sent me mm -hmm. something from the American College of Cardiology cardio smart like a little like pamphlet sort of thing and mm -hmm. and on the surface like at first glance it looks like one of those infographics that could be helpful like a right. you know okay so let's talk about what's on it first and then we're going to talk about the section that i texted you about right so it says the title of it is sizing up sugars and sweeteners and then it has in big blue letters sugar all caps it's one of the most popular ingredients in the foods and drinks we consume, and it's found in most processed foods. And it has a little section that says, then and now. 1800s, the average American consumed two pounds of sugar annually. And I think, is that, is that a lot? Like, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I'm sure they're talking about added sugar, by the way. Right. Um, no, no, no. They're talking about, because people, you got to remember, in the 1800s, Sugar was still something that only rich people. Right. So if so you had sugar, about, you weren't like buying know, sugar to put in your coffee. No, they're talking fruits and this and that. And they're not talking food. You got to remember, processed foods didn't exist back then. There was no. No, I think that what they're talking about, I don't think they're talking about naturally occurring sugars. I think they're talking about actual sugar that you would have two pounds over the year if you had a piece of cake. For, okay. You know what I mean? You would go buy a pound of sugar and that would last you for three months, right. six months to make your cakes, to whatever things you're going to use with sugar. By, by because the way, it was add, actually a treat back then. Right. And let me add this. When we did the research for my first movie, Fatter Documentary, we, we looked up, I, I said, when, when Lincoln was in office, so that's 1860, 1865 ish how much sugar was the average American eating? And it was less than two pounds. It was like a pound and a quarter to a pound mm -hmm. and a half. So it was even less than what you're saying. So right. that's in the ballpark. Let's say it was yeah. two pounds. Yeah, so, uh, so back before we had grocery stores, you would go to the general store and you would say to the guy behind the counter or, the, or his wife, hey, I would like a half a pound of sugar, you know, a pound of flour, I need right. to, what, whatever you would get just from the general store. They didn't have packaging. They didn't have corrugated. They didn't have packaging to put like one pound or five pound bag of sugar or box of sugar individually right. packaged. It was in a big barrel and they would scoop it out and put it into your little burlap sack and that'd be it. Right. Right. And uh, weigh it out. Yada, yada, yada. Um, we didn't have the plastic that they put it into. We didn't have twist tie. Like it, the, none of that existed. So right. to me, two pounds of actual cane sugar or beet sugar makes sense. Okay. For what, like, an let, let's, let, let's just say that's the deal. Yeah. That's like what an average house frau would make. I mean, listen, back then you didn't have access to fruit year round. A couple of months a year. That was it. You had apples in the fall. Yeah. You might have strawberries, depending on where you lived. Midwest. If you grew them in your yard, you'd have some strawberries in the summer or right, early right. summer. It, it wasn't like produce today. Right. It wasn't like, Driscoll's that owns all the strawberries and doesn't even grow any of them. But that's another story. Right. Um, so two pounds over the whole year annually. Mm -hmm. right. Then on this thing, it says, and there's a little bit of a glare. It looks like 1970s um, consumption up to 123 pounds annually. Sounds about right. So from two pounds of for a whole year, right, to one hundred and twenty-three pounds. That's correct. Is bonkers to me. Yeah. So 
And we talked about that in the movie because now, do they tell you what it is now? Today, consumption is almost 152 pounds annually, equal to three pounds weekly. And three, so we, you had two pounds for a whole year, and now it's three pounds a week. And when we looked it up for the movie, depending on what you looked at, it was as low as 150 pounds per person per year and upwards of 300 pounds per person per year. What? And my question so six was- six pounds a week. Right. So my question was, how can it be? And they said, well, you know, it depends on who you ask and who did the survey because- Okay. The people that are walking around drinking big gulps around the clock and, you know, sure. one can of soda after another. And I, I, there are people, you know, when you talk to the Scott Kings of the world and all these people, say, oh, yeah, I was drinking two or three liters of Coke per day. You know, that's yeah. how quickly you could get two pounds of sugar. And day. honestly, it also right? depends on how much people recollected from the day before that they wrote down. And so I can understand that there's a range and it's unless yeah, so, you have them... Yeah. So depending on what you look at, we took an average right. for the movie and when we put it in there because it, you know, it was, it's at least 160 pounds per person per year on average and okay. maybe as high as 300 pounds per person. It's doing per the year. standard we American diet. Pounds of sugar, the standard American diet. But so, you see, this is past the standard American diet because as I said, when people get addicted to sugar, right. it can be close to a pound a day when they start drinking. Look, I talk to a lot of five and 600 pound people. You know, I, I do these consults yeah. every day and, you know, they tell you what they have. Some of them will say, oh, I have the Diet Coke. I have three, three liter bottles or three, one liter bottles of Diet Coke. Some of them just, no, no, I have Pepsi. That's my thing. Some people, oh yeah, I have uh, RC Cola, check all these cheap ones that you could get. That stuff still exists. They will drink orange, like I was talking to someone not long ago, I didn't even know they did orange soda anymore. And uh, she was like, yeah, I go through liters of orange soda every day. And I said, well, when do you drink water? And she's like, I don't, that's my, that's my hydration. Right. right. And then yeah. people don't like the taste of water because they're so used to having the sweet drink. Right, right. Well, what I found was shocking was that in the 1970s, it's 123, and then now it's 150. I would have thought it had been much lower in the 70s, but what, what that tells me is that we were already eating a lot of doctored processed foods. Like it was already, it, it was already in the works as of late 50s onward, maybe even as far as far back as right after World War II, right? Where they started adding stuff, in but the, really in the yeah, 50s, 1950s, 60s, right? Yeah, the 50s, it mm -hmm. started getting wacky. By the time we got through the 60s and Ansel Keys did his work through the McGovern Committee, it just went, you know, when they started saying you can't get fat from sugar yeah. and they, they would run soda ads that said, hey, sugar is just what you need to cut cravings, right? You don't eat anything else. You know, it, right. the things they said in these ads are just ludicrous. Yeah. It, it just is. Well, so that, on the surface, reading this document, you go, well, okay, that's edifying. Um, but then you get down a little further and I'm going to read the right side. Um, common names for added sugars you should watch out for made from real agave syrup flavored with beet sugar contains cane juice crystals includes cane syrup. So they're using a lot of the language that's on food labels right now. And that are different names for sugar that you might not even know are sugar, or you might think, well, it's made from beets and that's a vegetable, or um, it's cane juice, so that's healthier. It's agave, so I've been told that that doesn't spike your blood sugar, you know, all those things. And it's even interesting that they have these things in different colors. It doesn't quite make sense, you know, but at least it's trying to include different things. Right. Then on the left, it says, this is the second most important thing on here. How much sugar should you consume? And it says, <laughs> this is, this is, I'm sorry, this is crazy. Men, and it has nine drawings of tablespoons holding sugars. And it says up to 150 calories daily from sugar, parentheses, nine teaspoons. That's telling you, you should consume nine teaspoons. Vinny, you're a man. Yeah. yeah, you better believe I'm a man. You better believe it. Well, guess what, bro? Right. Nine teaspoons of sugar a day. Have you gotten your nine teaspoons yet? 
I don't think I've had nine teaspoons this year. <laughs> oh, me neither. Absolutely not. Women, guess what? Women, you're only allowed six. Six teaspoons. Uh, up to 100 see, calories daily from sugar. It's still a man's world, Anna. It it's is. It is. Yeah. Then underneath that, there are, the little, there are these little drawings of the, you know, the fake sugar packets. And it says many people turn to artificial sweeteners and other sugar substitutes in an effort to reduce the amount of calories from sugar they consume. Now, it doesn't say that you should do that or should not do that. It's just making a statement. Now, here's the number one most important part of this document that you sent me. Mm -hmm. At the bottom, there's tagline. For more information, visit www.cardiosmart.org forward slash sugars. And then underneath it in tiny writing, it says, CardioSmart is sponsored in part by the Coca-Cola company. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A Coke has 38 grams of sugar per 12 ounce can. How many teaspoons is that? Mm. Well, let's see. One teaspoon of sugar is about 16. Mm. You might have to look it up. Okay. So how many, gra how many grams of sugar in a teaspoon? Is that what I'm looking up? Uh, I don't know if you can. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm going to say it's Okay. Probably four grams of sugar in a teaspoon. So that's 24. I, as a woman, I'm allowed to have 24 grams, mm -hmm. six times four. So I can have 24 grams of sugar according to these six teaspoons. Right. <clears throat> but you said a Coke has 38 grams? Um, yeah, I think. Mm. So you can't even have a whole Coke. Coke shot themselves in the foot. But you I see, they don't care because they know that they know that as soon as someone starts eating sugar, you can't stop. <laughs> that's right. They know they have an addictive problem. Who's gonna leave a wounded soldier undrank Coke that's open sitting on the table? It's never happened in history. No. You know? Um so you yeah, can have a Coke and a half or a Coke and a third. Yeah, if I wanted to. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, think about that. I mean, we have the prisoners running the asylum. Mm -hmm. and it, <laughs> the inmates are running the asylum. It, there's, yeah. there's no two ways about it. And, you it's know, I, I think I was talking about this uh, on a Wednesday show a while back where we were talking about, you know, the, the time, uh, you know, the Corolla show said, hey, there's a study that says pasta is good for you. And I had them look it up. And I was like, I said, who? Who sponsored that study? It was Barilla. Barilla. <laughs> you know, come yeah. on. They sponsored a study that said miraculously you should use our product. What yeah. does that tell you? It tells you everything you need to know. Um, yeah. So yeah. I know that those kinds of pamphlets are, you know, they're passed out in schools and hospitals and libraries and yeah. corporate meetings and health initiatives. So just, you know. Read the disclaimer, folks. Look, it's no different than when the Sackler family put out the the pain yeah. measurement thing and sent it to all the hospitals. What is your they level? They still of use pain? it. They Five. all use it. Yeah, and if you had anywhere past the three, they would give you one of the Sackler, you know, drugs, which was oxycodone, which you know is the the precursor to ending up on heroin and living on the street. So there you have it. Right there you go. It, you know. <laughs> You got folks, all I'm saying here is you go, well, Vinny, what are we going to do? We got to stop these people. You're not going to stop them. You're not going to stop them. I'm not even, don't try to start a campaign and stop them. You're going to waste your time. No, no, no. Yeah. You got to advocate for yourself. That's what this podcast has been about from day one. You choose with your wallet. And your brain. Choose with your brain. The, Use um. I will say when we first started this podcast, you couldn't find grass fed beef anywhere. You couldn't find a lot of um, grain free stuff. Now we have keto explosion at the grocery store. Now we have like the word is out. If, if you guys choose, <clears throat> excuse me, Ooh, if you guys choose with your wallets, mm -hmm. the food companies will respond because they want to yeah. know where consumers want to spend their money. They also want to make sure that they don't disclose how much crap is in the existing food that you already buy. Trust and believe. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the food show then. All right, Speaking of the food that, industry. Um, 
the, the best food on the planet is olive oil. The problem is most olive oil is cut up to 40%, and, uh, and they cut it with seed oils, the stuff you're not supposed to be having, things like rapeseed oil, also known as canola, safflower oil. They'll cut it with anything. And then once you cut it up to 40%, it doesn't even taste or smell like olive oil anymore. So now they have to add a, a perfume to it, a chemical to make it smell like olive oil. And then they have to add a colorant to it so it can kind of look like olive oil. In other words, when you go get something like Bertoli or any of these brands, you're drinking crap. But wait, there's a company that's coming to save the day. That's right. Villa, Villa Capelli. Capelli. Yeah, they're coming to save the day. Paul Capelli and his uh, boyfriend at the time, but then husband, Stephen Crutchfield, started this company, Villa Capelli. When Paul passed away. Guy could not figure out how to stop smoking, died. Great man. And, um, you know, Stephen Crutchfield could have said, you know what, the hell with this. I'm moving back to the States. Nope. He rolled up his sleeves and he says, I'm going to keep this great company going and it's running better than it ever has before. Stephen Crutchfield, Villa Capelli, go check it out. You want to save 10%, get the three liter 10. I tell everyone, just get the three liter 10. And look, a lot of people have been calling me, Vin, they're out of product right now. I can't get the product. They're out of product. Yeah, guess what? Everyone take a breath. Take a breath because here's the deal. Kind of like my vitamin company, Stephen Crutchfield will not sell the stuff before it's time. He won't go out and buy other crappy oils and all this kind of stuff. He waits until the trees in Puglia has olives. He plucks the olives. Oh, he doesn't do it himself. He's got people that work <laughs> for him. And then they crush them. They get the juice from the olives, which is oil. And then you get the finest oil on the planet. Um, so if it's not in stock, if what you want is not in stock, get on that mailing list. Do everything yeah. you can. When you get in your oil, when you get your oil, get put in promo code Vinny, you'll save 10% every single time. That's right. 10% Villa Capelli. Um, so go do that. Uh, Anna. The, the promo code is Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. Yeah, no wimpy Y. Um, okay. Anna, you went um, to a food show. Now explain, I've been to this food show before. Yes. So explain to the audience what sh food show you went to and just the, the, the magnitude of the show that you went to. Okay, so this is called Expo West. It's the largest food show in North America. And um, it is. it takes place at the Anaheim Convention Center, which is several giant convention halls right across the street from Disneyland. So the whole thing already is a pain in the ass to get to, to park, to deal. Now, we were in the hot products section in the startup CPG section. We got our booth for a discount, 25% off because somebody dropped out last minute. So it only cost you a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's way more expensive than the fancy food show, which I got to say, the fancy food show uh, has a lot of uh, European and African booths and they're they have a whole Italy pavilion. So it's very mm -hmm. easy to go get some salami and cheese and olive oil be at the fancy food show. So I... I'm used to not eating at these shows. I'll bring a nut butter for the morning, one of your ultra fats. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll bring the nut butter in the morning and then I can go kind of snack on things. And by the way, I do want to taste stuff. I always want to taste stuff. Part of it is that people have these sweet faces and, you know, you don't want to be a complete asshole to them. But yeah. although people sometimes were to me, but whatever. Um, I, I, you know, if it sounds interesting, I want to taste it. I want to also preface this by saying I want innovation in food, just like I want innovation in medicine. I want them to come up with cool medicines. I want them to do gene therapy and cure cancer. I want them to come up with different things. So it's not that I don't want innovation in food. I just think it's a fine line between innovation in food and Franken food that's not necessarily the healthiest. Right. So I still I'm at the same place of if I'm going to have a treat, I'm going to make it homemade. Um, I just don't do it that often. So I just don't have treats. Like, it's not like something where I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to splurge and get this Ralph's cupcake. I'm just never going to do that. First of all, cause it has gluten and I have celiac, but you know, so the things that I taste, I'm always looking for, okay, who's going to make a good gluten free, this, that, or the other thing. Right. Turns out not a lot of people. 
And by the way, that's when I started food blogging 22 years ago was because all the stuff that was available was terrible. And I was like, well, I'm going to figure out how to make it and make it taste good. So. Anna, can, can I say something? You, you, you made me think of something. Mm -hmm. I want to say, you know, it was probably maybe 18 or 20 years ago. I was somewhere at a, some, uh, somewhere in LA at a, a, one of my client's kids' birthday party. Mm -hmm. that, and they had these cookies that you buy in the grocery store and they come in like these plastic, you know, I, I the call clamshell. Them are you shelter. talking about sprinkle cookies? Yeah, it, it was like a, it looked like a sugar cookie. And yeah, it had, it had the icing. It had icing on top of it. And, yeah. you know, I, you know, I get nervous when I go and I have to be around other people. I wanted something <laughs> in my hand. And I you bought those cookies to bring as a hostess gift? No, 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 no. They oh, had okay. them there. They, oh. there was, I, I just wanted something in my hand. Or so, I can't remember what. But so you were holding one of them gross ass cookies in your hand. Yeah, like I'm like talking. I'm using a cookie to talk and holding. You're waving it. At some point, I took a bite of it. No, um, no, no, no. It was very, very sweet when I took a bite. Yeah. But then the the roof of my mouth you got the got the Crisco on the roof of your mouth. It was like this coating. Yeah. And I thought I was having a seizure. That would be the hydrogenated soybean oil. I couldn't feel the roof of my mouth. I couldn't really <laughs> feel my yeah. tongue. I was gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people. Were, and I went. I said, Let me go get some water. Drink some water. No, that won't wash it away. It, oh it, no, that's it, in your body forever. The half life is forever. It may still be in there. Worse when I had the water, and by the way, I only had one bite out of this thing. I, I went and tucked yeah. it in the garbage can, and I, I. It's like wow, because you know I never eat that kind of stuff. I never. Eat. But every time I went into a Ralph's after that, and I would see those sugar cookies. I would say to myself, "Is and, and I asked other people, you ever get, you ever eat this stuff? And they, oh yeah, that's the way it's supposed to do. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It doesn't seem right. I did this one time. It's like, how is this delectable? How is this good? Right. Right. That I walked around with this film in my mouth that I couldn't get past. Okay. Well, let's talk about so that. That's because common. You're telling me that's common. Well, with those cookies, yes. With those kind of cookies. But, but also, too, whenever something is Franken food and you've been NSNG for so long, you don't right. really eat a lot of processed foods. Then you go to one of these food shows and you, your palate is not prepared for the well, Franken I, food I, that's going to come at you. It happened to me again because on the Wednesday show, I was trying foods that I never tried. I tried yeah. a pop tart. And I remember that was the next time I felt that thing. I was like, oh, this is the same feeling the I got. Yeah, the waxy yeah. kind of on the roof of my mouth. And I really, I had to go brush my teeth and, yeah. you know, kind of swish it out to get rid of it. So, like, yeah. if you yeah. were to make a loaf of bread at home mm -hmm. and you cut it or what, let's say you made a, um, a pastry at home. Mm -hmm. How long, how many days do you think that pastry would last on your counter wrapped up in a piece of wax paper? I'm going to just guess two, like the day you made it and the next day. Maybe three days because you okay. got eggs in there. Mm -hmm. You got, you know, butter. You have stuff that can curdle. You have stuff that can go rancid. You have stuff that can grow right. mold. You know, if it's fresh, it's, it has nothing to preserve it. So you either got to eat it, freeze it, or toss it, right? Uh, okay. So if you're, eating a, if you're eating a Pop-Tart, and those things, what do they have? 18 month, two year shelf life? No idea. And it's a pastry wrapped in wax paper. Mylar. It was in mylar. It was in mylar. Okay, because that'll keep it a little fresher. Okay. But it never molds. If you had that on your counter, you can have that on your counter for two years. So I would imagine that whatever it is that helps keep that from getting moldy, spoiled, rotten, whatever, is also giving you that mouthfeel. That, that would be my guess. Oh, that, that makes total sense. That would be, yeah. Um, so 
the Expo West, I know it's a bunch of... Bri- Here's the other thing, too. I don't have a chance to walk the show because there's just two of us a day working, and we should have... That's a mistake on our part. We should have had more people working the booth because it was slammed. The aisles were slammed with people, which, for me, activates massive anxiety because I'm like, what if there's a fire? What if we have to get out of here? Like, nobody's... I was trying to dart out to go to the restroom because I, I peed twice in one 12-hour period. Like, that's how busy oh, wow. it was. And so yep. I was trying to like dart out to go really fast and nobody's moving fast. Everyone's just ambling and tasting and, you know, enjoying themselves. And, um, there's no way to move quickly amongst crowds. And I don't, that's a feeling I don't love. Um, I love my little country life where it's just, <laughs> it's just me on my little plot of land. So, but people are super nice. They're excited to try overall. It's a great show for us overall. We had amazing meetings with buyers, with distributors, with investors, with brokers, with all kinds of people who I'm going to, I'm, I am currently following up with who are interested in carrying the sauces. And by the way, when I post in the Facebook group, Hey, we're, we're presenting to so-and-so we are actually doing that. So when you guys write in, so when I say, Hey, if there's any fresh time buyers or any Meyer shoppers out there, we're pitching to them this week. So if you want to write them a note or ask in your local, but you know, I'm very targeted targeted about that. Um, when I first started doing trade shows, and if I saw like, you know, the Whole Foods buyer walk by and they didn't stop and taste, I would be like, oh no, Whole Foods didn't stop. Now what I understand is there are so many category buyers, they're not your category. So if it's your category, almost all of them will stop. So, and because we were in hot products, it definitely drove more people up oh, there. Yeah. Plus, I'm at the point where I'm starting to know a lot more people, so they come hang out and say hi, which is good. You know, putting putting a, a face to the name, all that stuff. So, since we're in the hot products section, I think we were the only real food there because it's a lot of um, baked goods, kombuchas, a lot of beverage, a lot of beverage. Like the beverages, people had a new can of beverage in their hand. And I was like, where are all these beverage brands? They're everywhere. Right. Um, so I went downstairs to, so we're on the top floor of one of the main buildings and that's the third floor. And you really got, I didn't even think we'd be that busy because we're on the top floor. I was like, I'll be surprised. Maybe it was slammed the whole time. So I knew that Sprouts had their foragers booth because, you know, they have this forager team where they're supposed to go out and find new brands. So they ironically sit at their booth that's on the basement floor and you have to go to them. Yeah. I'm not living up to the forager name, <clears throat> but I went down there with some samples and some, you know, sales literature, yada, yada, do my thing. And I went with my broker and we're walking down there and talk and do the spiel. And luckily I knew the guy who was across from Sprout. So he made the introduction for me, which is very helpful. Yeah. And uh, by the way, it always helps to know somebody. Um, not that it can't be done if you don't, but meet, if, you, if you're trying to succeed in any industry, go meet and be as helpful to people as you possibly oh, can, yeah. because one day the they're going to help you out. So, yeah. and what I did for that guy was send him Calabrian chili flakes because that's what I do. Um, I will meet you at a mutual dinner and then send you Calabrian chili flakes because you talked about it. So I've never gotten any Calabrian chili flakes. You've never brought them up to me. You know what you bring up to me? Barbecue dust. And you know what I send to you? Barbecue dust. (laughs) So you want Calabrian chili flakes? I'll send them to you. uh, I love Calabrian. They're so good on everything. So as I'm walking back and I, I still have my little silver tray with my samples and the whole thing, I hear these ladies yell, do you want to try some coffee? I thought that's what they said. It's so loud in these trade show floors. Oh yeah. It's yeah. so crowded. and It's so loud. I was all I heard was coffee. I was like, yeah. And then I walked over and it said, cause I had already engaged them saying, yeah, give me some. And <laughs> coffee and he, show. A or something. No, it said beanless coffee. And I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> I wish you had been there with me. Oh, I was like, and I was literally like, oh, beanless coffee. What's that? I like chicory or like what? And they're like, yeah. And then they gave me the, sp- I didn't even, I couldn't even, oh, Vinny, I couldn't. And so they're so sweet. Life. These girls oh. are so sweet. Oh God. And it tasted yeah. awful. And I was like, <laughs> are, you, are you familiar with a, a beverage called Postum? No, we talk, tell about Postum because we've talked about it on the podcast. 
Okay. Uh, C.W. Post, who, you know, he was a good friend of uh, John Harvey Kellogg, uh, started his own, you know, dextrinization company where he took <clears throat> flakes and dextrinized them and turned them into, you know, a, a cornflake of his own called Post Cereal. And, you know, Post Raisin Bran is one of them, but they mm -hmm. have a lot of cereals out there. And um, at some point, CW Post said, you know what, I'm going to take the coffee industry on. This is probably back in the 30s or 40s. I don't know how far back Postum goes. So he took his flakes and he burnt them even more and made like a freeze dried burnt flake that when you added hot water to it, looked mm -hmm. like coffee and tasted like burnt flakes. But it was supposed, and it was supposed to be the healthy alternative healthy alternative to coffee oh god and it's called postum postum still and look it up see if they still sell i think they still sell postum it's the vegan healthy alternative well coffee is vegan anyway and <clears throat> cw post now yep. the way postum drink 15 bucks on amazon you're gonna get it uh, uh no do not get it do, do not i'm do not it. getting it so anna <clears throat> how is this still Back in the day, oh, hang on. God. Back in the day, you you know how we have misinformation now, and you know everybody can Google whatever they want to say whatever they want. Well, we didn't have Google back in those days, so mm -hmm. you know industrious like industrialists like C W Post would call their friends at the newspapers and go, "Listen, I need you to run, you know, a slur campaign. You know, just put, you know go you know go against coffee." It's like, okay, what do you want us to say? Just say, you know, we'll get some scientists to say that coffee will literally stunt your growth. <laughs> Which is what I was told as a child. Make you dumb. When I tried to drink my coffee. grandmother's iced coffee, she would say, no, 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 you can't have that. Caffeine will stunt your growth. It'll stunt your growth. It'll make you dumb. They literally, that was one of the campaigns. You can look it up. We'll make you dumb or stupid or whatever. Oh, man, that's the opposite. And it was all just put out there by CW Post. And it was like, hey, don't drink coffee. It'll stunt your growth and make you dumb. Because people, look, I started drinking coffee as a young kid. And I'm, I'm okay, I'm dumb, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, I, if, the, if I have, acuity. if I have any mental acuity, it's due to my caffeine it's consumption. Yeah. But, you know, that's what they did back in the day. Look, the same thing happened with um, hemp and all this kind of stuff. They're like, oh, you know, they were making paper out of hemp and, and rope and everything else. And then, uh, the guy who owned the newspapers, uh, what's his name out in California, uh, um, Hearst. He went, oh. wait a minute, I have all these trees. I own all these trees. I have farms and farms of trees. We can't, and I own newspapers. I can't have people making paper. Not out, out of hemp. hemp. You know, we need to, so they went, The regenerative hey, plant. That's why they went after hemp and rope and everything else. And we can't have that. We got to do this from tree. You know, all these campaigns would happen by these industrialists, these guys with a lot of money. CW Post did the same thing with coffee. God. Drink Postum is healthier yeah. for you. So, well, beanless look, coffee was a thing that I tried and I was upset started. about. Yeah, I mean, you can't get your taste buds back after you taste beanless. It was coffee. upsetting. It was upsetting. I just want, I just want a shot of like espresso. I thought the, I was like, just have like the actual food that tastes good. Like, cause that's what I'm doing. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I make an amazing pasta sauce that tastes so good. And you don't realize it all has clean ingredients cause it tastes right. so good. Like, right. but you know what? The number of people who came back to my booth on day three saying this was one of my top two or top three or top five things that I tasted in this entire show is what's mind blowing to me because it's just so much about like, here's the latest. And by the way, the girls next to me had a vegan gluten-free cookie that I will say is one of the best ones I've ever tasted. Now, the, it's also not shelf stable. It has to be refrigerated. It's made with fresh and ingredient. You know what I mean? Like they right. have, they're not there with, they're with their packaging yet to be able to make it shelf stable. And they shouldn't because once they do that, it's not going to be good. It's not, it's not going to be, a, you know what I mean? It's like, they're going to ruin it. And, and I, and I, my heart goes out to them because I wouldn't want to get into the fresh business or the frozen business or the, 
you know, anything where it's not shelf stable for a little while, like canning, what I'm doing with condiments, make it essentially shelf stable, the way that you hot fill and seal the jars. So same thing as canning at home. But anyway, so those girls, I was really like impressed with what they were doing, but also knowing that like, if they did really try to scale their business, I'm not sure how it was going to work for them. And that's the hard part about food. And I've said it on this show and I will continue to, it is so hard to push food out across this country. It is so hard to, it's amazing that we even have, that they figured out a way to get the berries to the stores in the middle of winter. It's not, right. it, it's not normal. And something's going to have to give about our, our, our supply chain and our food supply. So that's why I always come back to you get to choose with your wallet. Now, another trend that I noticed was dates were everywhere. Dates, dates it, it, well, everywhere. When I, yeah, when I was there, two dates years are ago, having a moment. Dates are the new well, cauliflower. Date, dates, dates were there two years ago when I was there. It's like everything was date this, date that, date, date, date. But I, before you move on to dates, mm -hmm. I, I grew up with a grandmother on the Sicilian side that you know would stand over a pot of gravy. Yeah, it was always bubbling on the stove. I had another grandmother who died when I was young, but she had her version, you know, mm -hmm. call it crazy. She had her version of what that was, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the long cooked sauce. And then I had my great grandmother from the old country who would literally stand over her gravy with a, a spoon in one hand stirring and the rosary in the other hand. You know, she, I grew up with these old world Italians, right? I grew up only knowing from real Italian homemade. You know, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, Anna, when I'm telling you your stuff is that quality in a jar. Oh, thank you. Thank and, you. And, you know, oh, I why, know it is. It, it, we've the, worked so Jim, hard to make sure that it is. My mom was a, was a gourmet cook and she wasn't Italian at all. Uh, she was Irish, as a matter of fact, but learned how to make all kinds of incredible dishes. She was a gourmet cook and she had her own version of a pasta sauce. And I got to tell you, she did. And when you, when you, when you grow up just eating this fresh stuff right out of the pot and you don't know anything else. And then you can all of a sudden get, look, the first time I had an Anavocino bottle in my hand, it was like, this is going to be some ragu shit. <laughs> you know, but let me just help Anna Nary out. Nary a tablespoon of paste to be found. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me appease Anna. Let me eat this shit. Tell her it's great. <laughs> and, and then I'll move on. Anna knows that I'm ordering this shit all the time. I can't get enough of it. I want the adibiata. I want the crema. I want the, the puttanesca. I want it all, all the time. And when Serena leaves town, I need even more of it because I, that's all I got. That's your go-to. If your I'm go -to. eating some kind of meat or something, I need this because I don't have anything else to go to. I'm either eating fish or I'm eating a steak or I'm eating some ground beef where I'm putting the Anna stuff with the meatballs and the cheese on top because I'm not a cook. And it, it feels like I'm eating something from Mama Virginia or um, uh my grandma Tartaritch or grandma Jardina, you know, it's, it tastes like I'm eating that stuff. So, and I'm not, well, that, I thank you for that. Telling you I appreciate that. It, well, here's the thing too. These old Italians in a bottle. The, the, a big comment that I get is that tastes sweet. How come there's no, how, how are you able to do that with no sugar added? And the reason is the quality of tomato that we use, which is, you know, the majority by far, like over 90% of all of the recipes is, the tomato that we use. And we purposely choose a really nice Italian organic tomato. Now, um, we would still choose an Italian tomato, whether or not it was organic, um, which we might go, we might go conventional. We're not sure yet, but for right now we're using that. I don't want to change that one tomato when we're in this growth phase. Right. So, <clears throat> but, uh, cause taste is obvious and consistency is very important. So it's, it's very interesting because my grandmother's recipe, which is what my recipe is loosely based on, I took the sugar out. My grandmother used to put a little brown sugar in there. But if you think about when her parents came over, when my grandfather came over, they were buying these horrible acidic canned 
tomatoes in the 30s and 40s. They were not good. They were not good. So they had to put us, the, the best way to cut acid, by the way, if something's too acidic, you either put fat in it, like a pat of butter or some olive oil, or you can put sugar in it. Those are the two ways to sure. cut the acid. So if something is really acidic in the can, so that's why. So, but if you have a higher quality tomato, and in America, we weren't, we weren't making high, we weren't canning high quality, but we're canning the, the trash and selling the nice fresh ones. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's kind of the, the history behind it. But so another thing that had a big moment at the show, I think was kombucha. Kombucha was everywhere. I couldn't believe the number. And, and by the way, right across from us was a kombucha that won like the whole show. And one of the ladies who was working there, she walked across and she said, I have your cookbooks and I've already pre-ordered your third one. I love your stuff. She goes here and she gave us a bunch of cans of kombucha, which was so sweet. And I was like, thank you. And then I took one sip and I turned, I couldn't like, they're right across from us. So I'm sure she was watching me drink. And I was like, mm, yeah, I just couldn't. And they like are going to do great and they should do great because if you like kombucha, apparently theirs is great, but it's not for me. So I, I just, it, it, to me, it was still an overabundance of sugar. There was sugar everywhere I looked. The big brands had these giant booths. They really spend money. Oh, so Simple Mills is one of those. It's like a grain-free brand. You know, they have almond and flour. And it just froze up, and oh. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, no, I'm here. Uh, Sorry. Am I, yeah, am there I back? There she is. You, okay, great. Um, yeah, was, yeah, you're coming back. So, okay, good. On. I was saying Simple Mills just one of those grain free right. companies. They have baking mixes, crackers, but it's still what, and people ask when they're new to NSNG, Hey, can I have those simple mills, almond flour crackers? And I usually say, if you want to completely plateau your weight loss, sure have them, but they're so, they're still very high in carb. There's so much. Am I frozen again? No, no, no. I, you, oh, you're, okay? low, you're coming back. But no, your voice is great. Okay, good. So uh, stay away from the processed almond flour, <clears throat> excuse me, almond flour things like that. But still Simple Mills is, is they're, they're, they're making nice products, but if you're doing NSNG, you probably are going to want to avoid them because they're going to be too high yeah, in carb and too processed. And also too, saying, yeah. they've grown and they're not using this, you know, anyway. Um, but I'm a big fan of the brand story and I like the lady who founded it. And I think again, Simple Mills is one of those companies that gets the word out. And so same with Siete. I talked to them at length. They get the word yeah. out about grain free. We need these companies out there talking about this stuff, even if their products might be too high carb for what your particular goals are. I we still need the too high carb too. It is, yeah, I, but I, we I, need these conversations because what they're doing is bringing it to the masses so that people right. hear it for the first time and they're not freaked out by it. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, so yeah, it's like yeah. it's like an intro to it. Look, it goes back to what I said early in the show about my new best friend Amy down the street, who yelled to her husband, "He's telling us not to eat grains." You know, it's like that's a shock for people. You yeah. know, so and, it and is. Look, Eric Westman has said to me several times, "You know, we'll tell people to go on fake sugars just as a, right. you know a methadone shot of right. that until they can get off of that." So, right. yeah, so there was a lot of the kombuchas, the, you know, at lower sugar, they would say lower sugar kombuchas and, or, you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, canned waters trying to be what liquid death is doing, you know, mm -hmm. cause liquid death has slayed it. And people still think that liquid death is an energy drink. And I'm like, it's a can of plain water. <laughs> That's yeah. all it is. They've done amazing with their branding and their, you know, they're a billion dollar company now and they sell cans of water cans of water yeah so Anna, did, did, were they reimagining everything like they were yeah with, there was a lot of reimagined there was a lot of the bigger brands which is funny now like six years later simple mills is now a big brand right with the job and they're a lot of brands are launching new flavors they they may expose a big deal for brands to like launch new things and somebody came up to one person came up and they're like, well, what's I, he had tasted before, maybe met medicine, fancy food. Show. He's like, what are you launching this show? I'm like us. <laughs> like, no. we, we have not yet hit anywhere close to critical mass. Like we're still trying to sell this. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and, and there's a lot of questions too about um, pricing, you know, they, they want what we have to sell Vinny. 
and but right. they do not want to freak their consumers out and they want it on the shelf for eight ninety nine or lower. And I'm like, I can't do it. There's no way. And I'm not going to go bankrupt just so you can have it on your shelf and make money off of it. Right. And, and the thing, the bottom line is people have to be educated that if you want this stuff that tastes like my mama Virginia made it, you know, then you, you have to pay for it. Yeah. It's not for, I mean, when I, when I, when I say that kind of thing, this isn't for, I, I'm not doing an infomercial for you. For no, 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 no. They have to understand that what's in your bottle is not ragu. Right. Right. It's not rails. It's a step above rails, right? That, 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 that's what your that's what your 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 conversation should be. You guys like rails? You think that's great? Okay, it's the three steps above rails. Three people from Campbell's came by. Yeah. First one from R and D tasted mm -hmm. all the sauces. I was like, "Excuse me, ma'am, <laughs> you're making me uncomfortable." Yeah. And she said that they had just finished inking the deal right before Expo started. That $2.7 billion that Rayo's sold to Campbell's for, they right. just finished it. Um, and then two other guys from manufacturing came over. And it was really, it was just very funny because I was like, hi. I was like, I, <laughs> but here's the thing. I would hope that, that Campbell's wouldn't ruin the good thing that they have with Rayo's because what Rayo's did was introduce a premium product at nine ninety nine on the shelf back in the nineties, and they were crazy for it. I'm trying to get something on the shelf for nine ninety nine. I'm still told I'm crazy, but I'm like, at least Rayos did it. At yeah. least Carbone did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but the but the difference is, I don't I don't use any paste. It's just it's all tomatoes. So anyway, um, it was interesting talking to the grocery buyers. You know, people are always interested They're, I'm sure they're being pelted now with follow-up. We'll see if things actually come from it, but with good relationships, the Sprouts buyer marched right up to me on the first morning of the show and just started grilling, grilling me. And I loved it. I loved yeah, it. They, they, they did grilled that to me. Maybe. We were there with the ultra fat grill, grill, grill. And you know, they're trying to figure out how, how are you guys doing? It's like, we're making it ourselves. We have our own manufacturing. We're, we're doing this from step one. Right. And what are your product fun. differentiators? I love yeah. that question. It's like, try this bitch. And then you'll know. <laughs> and then you'll know. But um, no, it was, it was actually good. And she goes, why weren't you in my pasta sauce reset? We just settled on the category. I said, we were. And she goes, well, I never received the samples. And I said, they were sent. Of course, I went back and tracked the samples were sent and delivered to the to the thing. But so that doesn't mean that they didn't make it up to her office. That can definitely happen, you know. And uh, right. but regardless, things usually work out for the way they're supposed to work out. So now they're considering us for an actually a better program where you do it like a temp thing. So that could mm -hmm. work or it might not. It might all implode. <laughs> it might all go away. I don't know. But exactly. but so there were good conversations like that that happened. And um, there was one, oh, the Kroger buyer is there. And so as part of our section, we all get to go. She's supposed to walk and hear everybody's spiel, right? Right. Turns out her flight got moved up, which means she wanted to get out of there. So she sat at a table and we did a speed dating. Like we, and we had 90 seconds for the pitch, for the taste, follow-up questions, that done, sucks. you're out. I love it, Vinny. Here's why get boil it down to the essence what's important say it taste it any questions i guess she, you're right she said i love it it's done you have a finite ending you're like you're not <laughs> there's not like this nebulous space of just trying to fill the you have to do it and get out and so um she said to me she loved it that's amazing please follow up with me my pasta sauce buyer said find me the next carbone and I said, let's make it a female owned carbone because they're notoriously bro -y. And, uh, and she said, yes, you know, that kind of thing. It, it was good. It was positive. Will anything come of it? We'll find out. Look, I, it Anna, to be seen. I wish you all the luck in the world. As I said, it was a convention of incredible meetings and, you know, yes. it, 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 you know, everybody is positive and everybody's doing everything. I think, I think you have a product that has legs. I hope so. And we haven't even started with spices in the grocery yet either. No, That's I next. Know. Once we get the tins. Anna, yeah. we've been doing this for an hour. Let's okay, call it. Okay, we did it.
because uh, right right when we went on the mic here, Serena said your burnt ends just showed up. I got burnt ends up there tonight. I'm so burnt jealous. Ends. I'm going to eat burnt ends. They're going to be cold, but I'm going to heat them up. Somehow. Rudy, clap to heat them in the pan. Make them even more crisp. You know that's what I'm going to do. I'll put them in. A, should I put a little butter on the pan? Just yeah, yeah, and just psh, psh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to group my burnt ends. Uh, folks, uh, Anna Vocino, she's been talking about it here for a few minutes. You don't even have to go, go, go into it. We out. talked about it enough. Go, go check out what she's doing. Go to eathappykitchen.com and see everything she's doing there. Oh, the spicy is back in stock. Arabiata for you direct-to-consumer buyers. The spicy is back in stock. You can get on the website now. It was sold out for a few weeks. You know, Miss Serena has to go back to L.A. to shoot a couple of pickups. Somebody there. needs some spices. Somebody needs some atabiata. I got you. Two two jugs will do me. Just two two you. jugs. Just two. Everybody jugs. wants two jugs. And you know what? I, yeah, I know they do. I like the two jugs. <laughs> you do. You yeah. like a set. And also, if those flakes showed up, those calabrese flakes. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just saying, Anna. You, you, like, you, you like, would you would get the two jugs of spicy, and then you would add. I know you. You would add. <laughs> and by the way, it's perfectly <laughs> spicy on its own, folks. He's just a madman. I know. Serena looks at me. She goes, "How do you do it?" It's like I'm I'm a I'm 100 Italian, but I'm also 100 percent Cajun. It just <laughs> it's it's so it's a spicy combination. Wait, Vinny, I just have to tell you this real quick. So we're <laughs> we finally settled on the everyday dust, the formula for the everyday dust. Okay, yeah. so this is just it's a be it's it can replace what's in your salt shaker, right? So I've done it in salad dressings, I've done it in roasted vegetables, I've done it, uh, you know, chicken. I've seasoned the steak with it, and I've every I've tried it in every application. It's great. So Matt, my uh, skeeter, my business partner, he Skeet. says. I just feel like because it's so salty, we should call it something else, like a seasoning salt or like everyday dust seasoning. Like we're still trying to figure out what the name is. And I just think it's really funny. I'm like, oh, we're coming from this holy other world where like everyone expects it to be salty. And even then, Vinny will still add more salt to it. Pretty much. It's basically mostly salt, but it's got yeah, all this I, other good I, stuff I, I, in it. Yeah. You know, when the neighborhood kids come over, they yeah. know, you know, they come over and have dinner with us sometimes in the family. Mm -hmm. They know to put my, I have a little silver thing. With your malt on? Yeah, with my malt on. And no, if we were serving a malt shake, they would put it next to me and go, you're going to need this for your much. <laughs> I don't, don't drink malt it shakes, folks. I love I that did. that's your rep, bro. Uh, yeah. Salt rep. <laughs> um, folks, go check out everything Animal Chino is doing. Uh, with me, rate and review this podcast. Yes. Just go rate and review. Yes. Um, Debbie and I and Chris, we're all talking about uh, fixing up my website. Uh, this isn't going to be there next week, but I'm going to start doing a thing where uh, some of the products that we really like, we're going to do like an affiliate link page that might not be Amazon. We're still using Amazon, but people always ask me about the Packer soap that I use, the Pine Tar soap. Oh, and yeah. So I might do a special page for that. We're going to be revamping my website. So <clears throat> that's coming soon. <clears throat> I haven't reopened the VIP list yet, but if you want to be on the waiting list for that, that thing is going strong. We're going to be doing another VIP at the end of Are the you, month. Are you're not opening it yet? No. Because people but ask me, the people ask, yeah. and I'm like, I don't have any pull. If you want to be on the waiting list, go to vinnytories.com forward slash VIP. Get on the waiting list. When we open it up again, uh, that thing is taken off like gangbusters. Everyone loves it. Everyone gets so much out of it. It's, it is. I I cannot believe how well we're doing with that whole thing. And uh, so, um, go check all of that out. Uh, I pulled up a song, Anna, from the past. Oh, yeah. I figured we'd do a little past here, and uh, so we're going to do this on behalf of Anna Vocino. My name is Vinnie Tortorich. Put life into living and do it with this girl. <laughs>